lawyer. She is a woman of God. She is an educated woman of God. She has her menis, um, MDiv from Berkeley School of Theology. Sis is on it. She know what she's talking about. She's a wonderful person. She's a wonderful mother. She's a wonderful friend. So why don't we all stand and let's just welcome the spokesperson of the King of Glory this morning, Minister Yolanda Perk. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. Pastor T did so wonderful. I was like, who is that person? so excited. God is an amazing God. Ooh. 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 Okay, I'm going to get through this sermon, I promise. Ooh. I'm going to start off with a prayer. Lord, my Heavenly Father, we thank you on today Ooh. that you have been better than good. Lord God, and we thank you that you are an amazing God. Lord God, hide me. <laughs> underneath the shadow of the almighty on today lord god don't let them see me but let them see you every word that is given to me by you oh god lord god let it touch the hearts and the minds of the people who are here that we forever will give you glory and honor and praise lord god these many blessings we ask in thy son jesus name amen amen in obedience to god to uh, pastor mike and his absence to uh, pastor t and to minister ryan and to any uh ministers leaders that are in the place on today Whew, i am extremely excited about the word for today so our text comes from first samuel 17 31 through 37 and the title if I could call it, that would be, We Have Been Here Before. The title of our sermon is derived from a conversation that Pastor Mike had with Angela Davis last year at the Kehinde Wiley, an archaeology of silence at the De Young Museum in San Francisco. Pastor Mike asked about the situation that black and brown bodies find themselves facing across America. I'm paraphrasing, so don't get me if you're like, well, I don't remember it that way. I'm paraphrasing, okay? Angela Davis's response was, we have been here before. This answer has perplexed me. Whew, and if we did it before, then that means we could do it again. But in that statement, we must have an awareness of our plight and a strategy to move forward. Amen. So as I sat there and I listened to her talk, she didn't go into depth about what the strategies were, but she says, we've been here before. And then that just allowed me just to sit. We, we've been here before where our communities were decimated by drugs and gun violence. We, we've been here before to see how racism has raged across America. We have been here before. We have the strategies to move forward. So our lesson text is taken from 1 Samuel 17, 31 through 37. But before we move forward, let me set the scene um, that society has dubbed the David and Goliath story. But I view it as a David and God's relationship story. Samuel was a priest, and he became the first prophet and the last judge. Then we're going to talk about David, who was Jesse's son, youngest son. He was the young man who tended the sheep, and he had encounters in the field. Never dismiss your humble beginnings. No matter where you start off, never dismiss it. It is always a learning process. In chapter 16, we see that David has been anointed king of Israel, yeah. and, his God, and God's spirit rests upon him. Now, mind you now, when God anointed David, David was in his teens. Mm -hmm. David just went right back out there and started doing the sheep thing again. Like, he didn't get a big head. He didn't say, look at who I am. No, he just went back doing what he was doing. In chapter 17, we find that Israel find themselves in a war with Philistines. And there is a man named Goliath. 
that comes out and share that to have a one-on-one -on -one fight and whoever wins, the other, the other people will serve them. So he's like, if the Philistines win, then Israel, you will serve us. If Israel will win, then we will serve you. The problem was, was that he was nine feet tall. And just his male, the, the thing to protect him was like 100 pounds. Everybody was like, no, 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 we're not coming out there to fight you one-on-one. -on -one. That's not what we're doing. So Israel was afraid. And for 40 days, he would do this. This is what happened. He'd just come out and issue something, and no one would move. Everybody like, mm-mm, we're not doing it. But of course, there is David. Isn't there something exciting about when you first learn about God or you know about God, you'll have that person say, I'll do it. I'll go. My God will take me, right? You will have that excitement about you, and you will know that no matter what, you will win. No matter what you face. That was David. David had that heart that no matter what, I'm going to win. But the reason why he had that heart is because what he faced while he was being a shepherd. See, that's why where you start matters. Because it's the experiences during that time that will set you up for when the season come, you already know what to do. You have the strategy. Because remember, we have been here before. Yeah, we've been here before. So during this time, Jesse sends out David to go check on the brothers. The brothers is on the front line. His brothers are on the first line. And he's going to check on them, doing what David does. He's like, are you OK? Because he has to go back and report back to his daddy what his brothers is doing, right? That's why he was sent. So he goes out there, little teenage boy. He going out to see. And then while he was there, that's when he heard Goliath say, let me tell y'all something. And he issued out the decree. He's like, wait a wait. And y'all scared? Wait, y'all serve God and you scared? So in our Bible study at times, Pastor T said, wait a minute, we can't be no wimp when it's about God, right? So David looking at them like, do, do y'all know the God we serve and you scared? All right, say less. So then while he was talking, he started to hear about all the things that you would get if you could defeat the Goliath. Like you get to marry, you, you don't have to pay taxes, like all those things. But that wasn't what got David to want to do this. He got really upset about the fact that how is he is going to offend our God? How do you think that you're going to come in here and that you are God for real? No, 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 no. So he said, let me go talk to Saul. And that's where he, he goes. He said, you know, I, I got to go talk to him, to the king. Mind you now, remember, this is a shepherd boy talking to the king. And he said, let me, let me go holler at you for a minute. So our lesson text comes from 1 Samuel 17, chapter 31 through the 37th verse. And our translation is the Holman translation. And it reads, but Saul replied. So when David went in there, he said, hey, I'm, I'm willing to fight. And Saul replied, you can't go fight this Philistine. You're just a youth. And he's been a warrior since he was young. David answered Saul, your servant has been tending his father's sheep. Whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a lamb from the flock, I went after it, struck it down, and rescued the lamb from its mouth. If it reared up against me, I will grab it by its fur, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Then David said, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, well, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. Right. And sometimes what we tell people, go ahead, though. Right. We're not going, but we're going to tell somebody else. Go ahead. Right. And so that's what he did. And. The story continues where David tried to put on all of the armor and stuff, and he couldn't even lift the armor. He couldn't lift the sword. He was like, no, 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 let me take this off. Let me be myself. Yes. See, God wants our authentic self, yes. not someone else's. You don't have to be clothed in what someone else does, right? We all have a piece of the puzzle. 
We just got to operate in our process, in our peace. Whatever is your peace is, you operate in it. So he said, nah, I, I don't need that. He's like, so let's go. So our scripture goes on as we see all this happening with David. David taking off the armor. So one th there are three things that we could take from this text. That's it. That's all. Just three. One, not everyone will believe in you and what you are chosen to do. Two, remember who you are and where God has brought you. And three, show up prepared for battle. So if we don't understand that everybody is not going to believe in you. So let's look at it. David faced a lot of adversity during this process. So what you don't know is, one, his brothers did not think well of David. See, we, as sometimes as Christians, if we know the David story, we think of David and like he was like slaying people and he was the fighter. No, this is David, the kid, before he even became that. And then there was jealousy was involved because if you read a few scriptures before, David was anointed, right? But mind you now, he's anointed, but still out there in the sheep, sheep. Like, okay, like whatever, whatever God is telling me to do, I'll do. So in our lives, we are called to become, and the burdens we have on our heart is to do. So we are called to become whatever is the burden of our heart. So if you are called to a certain thing, your heart will be burdened to do it. You will be trying to figure out how to do this thing, and you're naturally doing it. It's, it's in your walk, right? At times, we will be lonely, <laughs> and no one may see you for who God has called you to become. You will be underestimated and pushed to the side due to what you look like and where you come from. But the eternal one is not measuring people by what humanity sees. God is looking at the heart and your love towards the eternal. So the question is, what is God calling you towards? Remember, we have been here before. So if we've been here before, there's everything that we need is in the house. Everything that is going on in the world, we are all called to some part of it to answer the call. So the question is, what are you, going, what are you being called to do? If nothing is new under the sun, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, you will leave some people behind in where you are going. And that is okay. Because everyone has their own road to walk and you have yours. So sometimes in our road of discovering who we are, we like to take people along with us. We don't want to be here by ourselves, right? David stood alone. Think about it. He's on the battlefield, on the front line, and he's by himself. Saul is not going out there. His brother's not going out there. The rest of the army is not going out there. He is alone by himself. But he said, I have God who is for me. Who else can be against me? He said, if I go, then I will go. Sometimes we have to have the heart that says, if I die, I die. Let's go. So that's the heart of David in this moment. He was like, I'm going to go out as my authentic self, and we're going to do this. So we got to remember, not everyone is going to believe in you. So if you know that God has called you to a thing, sometimes you can't share with everybody. Keep it to yourself. Stop operating and start motioning yourself in that, start putting yourself in that direction. Everyone is not going to be on board. Everyone is not going to like the subject that we're choosing, right? But even though everybody is experiencing it in some type of form or fashion. So two, remember who you are and where God has brought you. There is something that happens in remembrance. Yes. Something that begins to shake in remembrance. Right? When you start to think back from where God has brought you from, you're like, Lord, if you did it before, you can do it again. As David was talking to Saul, he stated in verse 33, you can't fight. You are too young. David told Saul about the animals that he faced. And he said, how God has given with him. 
There are times you have to look back over your life and remember what God has done for you. I am reminded of a song that says, as I looked back over my life, right? You remind yourself where God has brought you from here to here. This is also a time to encourage yourself. And whatever you might be facing in life, if there is fine, if everything is fine, then you can look over your life and see that it is well. So if you, if you like, well, you know, Yolanda, everything is fine in my life, then you can look over it and say, it is well. But if your life is tumultuous sometimes like mine, where sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, we can start off in the morning and it's great, and then by midday you're like, really? <laughs> and then by nighttime you'll be like, oh no, you didn't. So if your life is like mine, you have challenges in your life and you have to remind yourself. And the things you have to remind yourself is sometimes we like to remind ourselves with platitudes and things that the earth says is okay. That you, you're beautiful, you're amazing. And don't get me wrong, you are all those things. All those things. But there's something that happens when we begin to quote scripture. There's something that begins to happen in the spirit realm that shifts when we begin to say, no, but 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 says, but as it is written, what I did not see and ear did not hear and whatever entered the human mind, God prepared this for those who have loved him. Then we go on to say Joshua 1 and 9, haven't I commanded you, be strong and courageous. Be not afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then we go to Isaiah 43 and 2, and it says, I will be with you when you pass through the waters and when you pass through the rivers. They will not overwhelm you. You will not be scorched. When you walk through the fire and the flame, you will not get burned. When you begin to tell yourself this, Lord, woo, you begin to say, Lord God, I can. The challenges you face are to make you stronger. Yes. I used to say all the time that we over-spiritualize pain in the church. I used to say it while I was in seminary, and, and I would say, well, you know, every time we're being disrespected or hurt in the church, we over-spiritualize it and say, well, you know, God is using you. That is the reason why God is, you know. And sometimes there are semantics where you're like, no, they just wasn't a good leader. Right? right? There was some jealousy, some envy, and some strife involved. And that is true. But everything worked for your good. Yeah. And God will cause everything to happen for you. But you got to believe that. Yeah. He will turn your pain into purpose. But you got to believe it. See, we got to be like David and say, you know what? David could have lost his life many times. The, the bear could have took him, right? The lion could have took him. But he said, no, I overcame. And then what he said I thought was so beautiful. He said that when the animal would take the sheep, he went after the animal to get the sheep. But if the animal left him alone, he left the animal alone. But if the animal attacked him, he said, let's go. There are times in our lives that we gonna have to say, let's go. Come on. We, we're gonna have to say that. And see, that's the part we don't wanna do. We don't wanna tell the truth at times, cause it hurts. Let, let's just, you know, we've been here before. And what our foreparents did in the march and the civil rights, that was beautiful. But now we gotta critique it and make it better. So we gotta tell the truth. If we gonna do ministry, you have to tell the truth. Yeah. And then we gotta accept truth when it comes. Yeah. Sometimes we can see it and we won't accept it because it didn't come from who we wanted it to come from. It didn't look like what we wanted it to look like and they didn't say it the way we wanted it to say. I ask sometimes People, when they say, well, Yolanda, you don't know. This is how it hurt me, and this is what happened. And it sounds cruel when I say it, but I really mean it, but not in a nasty way. I say, but is it the truth? Sometimes we got to get past the fluff, and you got to ask yourself, is it really true? And if it is, it's okay. Own it. Move on. Let God forgive you. Move on. And let's try not to make it do that thing again. 
But a lot of times we have been here before and we don't own it, we won't accept it, and then we stay in our own way. So if we're gonna be like David, we can't do that. We're gonna have to face it. And then we gotta face it head on and we gotta say, let's do this. So then our third one says, we gotta show up prepared in the battle. This fight in America, in the world, this fight is not going to happen by happenstance. You have to show up. You have to show up to the polls and vote. Yep, mm hmm You have to show up in your life, in your family life. I hear people say, well, you know, I want to mend the brokenness in our families, but you got to show up in that. I remember Pastor Donna saying, peace is not peace. We think that being quiet is being peaceful, but it's not peaceful as if everybody is feeling some type of way and don't like each other and being passive aggressive and looking at each other with a side eye like, oh, that's not peace. That's toxic and everybody want to stay home. And so we have to show up for the battle prepared. When David walked upon the battlefield, he showed up as himself, the shepherd boy, who believed in God. Yeah. Who are you showing up in the battle? Who are you showing up as in the battle? Is it somebody else? Is it your mama? Is it your grandma? Like, I love the way my grandma prayed. I love the way my mama did this. But God is like, no, I'm looking for you to show up in the battle. But how do you show up in the battle if you don't have a relationship? How do you show up in the battle if you don't know who you are? How? How could you do that? David knew who he was, whether we liked him or not, whether we critiqued his later life or not. David was clear about who he was. The question is, are you clear about who you are? Because remember, we have been here before. So he was confident, not in himself, but that God can deliver him. That is a different type of faith to trust God in the face of your adversity. David had his stones and his slingshots. It worked before and it will work again. Everything you are going through prepares you for the next season of your life. Learn the lessons and come prepared for battle. I can empathize with the hurt, but do not stay there. It is in our scriptures that we see that David brothers did not detour him. See, there are going to be detours in your life. There's going to be people talk about you. There's going to be people who are going to say some things on social media. Lord, help us. All in the chats of our the things that we say. And it is off topic or it might be on topic, but no one knows all the intricate details of the situation. They just know what people are saying. We can't stay in the midst of our pain. We can't stay in the midst of our hurt. We can't stay in the midst of our disbelief. Because if we do, we won't be able to accomplish what God is sending us to do. So David came on the battlefield knowing that he's a shepherd boy, knowing he only had five rocks and a slingshot. How are you showing up? And he came ready. He was like, this is all I need. I don't need the army because they was not with him. I don't need my brothers because they were not with me him. I don't need anybody. I got God and that is enough. Can we say that for real? Or do we want someone to encourage us? Do we want someone to say, great job. You did amazing today. Do we want someone to uplift us? Or do we know that we are enough in God? So as we begin to prepare for battle, whatever your battle is, what I I have learned is that having a relationship with God means spending time with him. While David was shepherding, who was he, he spending time with? God, right? So as in your life, how are you spending time with God? How are you reading his word and digesting it and taking the tools from it? I'm not saying to use it, as some people do, to weaponize the word of God against people. That is not what I'm stating. Okay? I'm not telling you to weaponize the word. 
That is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. I'm not telling you to do that. What I'm telling you is that the word of God has some tools that you can use that will help you get through because it did, he did it for David, he will do it for me. He did it for grandma, he could do it for me. He did it for so-and-so, he could do it for me. That is the reason why we have a remembrance. That is the reason why we study. That is the reason why we know what it is. It's something different when you begin to pray and you give God's word back to him. It's something that happens when you begin to pray and you say, Lord, you said. It's knowing who you are because we've been here before. So, Lord, I'm not going to let them take me out. Whew. Because I've been here before. I'm going to share something with you just a little bit. So my mom was in the hospital, and this was years ago. My mom was in the hospital, she had a triple bypass surgery, and my mom had a um, bad heart since the age of 34. And the doctor told her that she wasn't gonna live, and then surprise, she had me um, in the midst of all that, right? And so she was 72-ish, she was 70-ish, and she went in the surgery, and my mom never cried. I'd never seen her cry, maybe like once or twice, right? And so I literally seen this woman cry in the hospital. That's when I knew something wasn't right. I said, if you were crying, oh, it's, right? Like, where's that David at, right? But it's okay, because that's why you have to surround yourself with people who can stand for you in, the, in your weakness, right? And so my mom, was crying and my auntie was trying to encourage her. And she went in and she came out and uh, she wouldn't wake up. And my mom kept flatlining over and over again. My sister was going crazy, my auntie was mad. And you know, so I gotta be honest, I'm the oblivious one to, to a whole bunch of stuff. So when it comes to like going to the hospitals, I never go. I don't, I'm not that type of person. So I was oblivious that my mom may not wake up. I was oblivious to all of that. And everybody else, their emotions was high. And then the doctors came in. I was like David with the Israel. The, the doctors came in and they said, well, we, we don't know what to do. Ain't you the doctor? How you don't know what to do? Right? And so they said, well, we got to take her in because there's a little clock that they didn't take out. They said, we thought she'd be okay. We'll take her back in. So they took her back in and she came out and she still wasn't awake. But let me tell you about the power of prayer. In the place where they have the heart, search, the heart patients go, there's like this little room for the family. And all the nurses was looking at us like, they never left. They stayed there throughout the whole time. And there was another room as you walk in, and I said, well, you know, I know a God. So I went into the other room, <laughs> and I'm walking back and forth. I'm reading Psalms 91. I'm saying, Lord God, you said, Lord God, don't take her now. Give us more time, right? I begin to say, Lord God, you said. Lord God, you will be our provider. You will be our healer. You will be our way maker. Lord God, your word says so. And you are a God that cannot lie. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. And then my mom woke up. Amen. Wow. Come on, God. <sighs> my mom was blessed to be with us for a whole nother year. Wow. It was one year in, in its entirety. Wow. My point is, is that you might say, well, you know, Yolanda, it didn't work for me. Maybe in that season. I don't know. But I do know that we have to know God for ourselves, And we have to utilize the word based off what the word of God says. And we have to be like David that says that if I go, I go. But I'm here. We've been here before. So that situation has prepared me to say, Lord God, we've been here before. So no matter what I face, Lord God, we've been here before. You are a God that cannot lie. Your word says so. Ooh, so I'm going to walk in alignment with you. I may not understand it right now. I may not. It might hurt. Ooh, 
might work my nerves. But we've been here before. And I haven't won every battle. I've lost a few. But in the midst of my losing, whoo, God has given me joy. In the midst of my losing, I have had peace. And then it all worked for my good later on. So I'm trying to let you know is that we have been here before. So what does it look like to show up for yourself? God, what does that look like to you? I'm here to tell you don't give up. We've been here before. I'm here to say don't tap out. We've been here before. I'm here to say that no matter what you're facing, we've been here before. And if I shall say on a Tuesday night at prayer service, we, we're here. And if you need someone to walk with you, let's go. If you need someone to encourage you, let's go. If you need someone to talk to, let's go. Because we've been here before. Thank you.